Hello there! Welcome to Joe Cranor's Vanilla Minecraft Tutorial Series. Today's episode, episode 4, is based upon mining and mineshaft design. You can see over there we've got ourselves a little mineshaft. We're going to get onto that right about now. But before we get into that, however, we're going to learn how to make three new items, each of which is relevant to, today, to today's topic of mining. First, and you know, what I find to be most important about mine shafts is the stairs. So we're going to make some right now. So we're going to grab some of this wood, wooden planks, go to our crafting table and start to craft it. So as you can assume, stairs would be something like this. Just three straight down, right? We got a one, one kind of thing. But it's not. So if we take our wooden planks or stone or whatever you have, solid blocks, remember, and we apply it in this recipe, we get ourselves the oak wood, or really any wood stairs. So if we take these over here, we just place them down, we get ourselves some stairs. Nice. You can see also, if you are paying attention, I've done a bit of remodeling since the last episode. And we got a lot of stuff to get into, and that's the old house. We'll take a tour of that at the end of the episode, I think. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that towards later on. Um, the second item we're going to make is the sign. So we're going to grab a few sticks here. Maybe make a few torches as well. Go to our crafting table and make a sign. So as you can see what the sign looks like, it's got what to be it looks to be a stick and some wood. So if we take a stick and we put it in the crafting table in the middle, and we take wood on the rest of the top slots, leaving these two open, we get ourselves the sign. If we place our signs like this, and we say type enter and sign we get ourselves a sign. Perfect. Um, third and finally uh, of the items I'm going to make um, is the bucket. But before I make a bucket I would like to apologize to a viewer who asked how to make buckets to which I didn't have an answer. Well, I mean I told them but well, I didn't tell them but a, a friend did of how a bucket is made. I didn't say it in our farming episode, even though I had somehow moved water with some mysterious magic. I would like to apologize to you personally, and you know, this is how you make a bucket. I'm sure you figured this out by now. So we're going to take three iron, actually we'll take it all. Take some iron and go over to the crafting table. Um, what, we was, what we would assume is that a bucket is something like this. You know, something akin to that. But it's not, you know, a mine cart takes up that recipe, and another recipe takes up the top two, and another recipe takes up the entire thing. So what we're going to do is kind of caper it, just like a bucket is, so it's kind of got a V-shape. We're going to take iron there, iron here, and iron here, and you can see it's kind of capered like the bucket is, okay? And it gives us the bucket. And you'll notice that almost all Minecraft recipes are as close to the shape as they can get. So to use the bucket, um, we're going to go over to a water source and right click. Okay, it picks up the water. And we know that if we take water to a hole, like I showed in the last episode, and we just right click, we can put it in. Okay, it's as simple as that. Let's grab this dirt out and replace it. What we don't know is that if you go up to, say, a lava source while you're mining and you want to be able to walk across it, if you place down your water, it turns water into obsidian. And obsidian is entirely safe to walk over. Awesome. Alright, so now that we know these three items, um, we can apply them in the techniques I'm about to describe um, to make our mining uh, easier to navigate. Um, our sorting system, as you can see, like I've done here, um, much more efficient. And, you know, the experience itself, far more efficient than just digging randomly in whatever we want. So let's get to the mining. And, you know, as you can probably assume, you know, Basic mining is just hitting a block and gathering the results. So we got ourselves some cobblestone. Okay. But what you wouldn't assume is that as a trained Minecrafter, which is what I hope you'll be at the end of this series, um, you'll only ever work efficiently. You won't just hit blocks and hope for a result. I won't just dig these kind of things and hope to goodness that I get good items. Because I'm, most chances I'm not going to. Mining in the Minecraft world efficiently saves us a lot of time. It saves us a lot of pickaxes, shovels, and torches, and it gathers the most new resources possible. You know, 
Sure, we could go up here and we could mine the entire world around us. Uh, everything we could see, we can mine it out. But that would take a lot of time, a ridiculous amount of time. And to put that into to put that into perspective, I've made here a 16 by 16 white area. Okay. This 16 by 16 area down to bedrock, which is the substance at the bottom of the earth that you can't dig through, by the way, contains approximately 66,000 blocks. If you did an area 16 by 16 10 times, okay, so 160 by 160 you would have over a million seven hundred thousand blocks that you would have to dig. That's a lot. And if each block took, say, a half a second to dig up, it would still take you over nine days to dig up the entire thing. And that's at the fastest speed possible. That's a lot of gold pickaxes. So it's just not going to happen. Now, assuming, no, sorry, knowing that ores and whatnot spawn at about 5% of all blocks, if you do the simple math of 5 times, or 0 0.05 times 66,000, you'll see that the ratio just is not worth it. Somehow managed to do that. I didn't do this on purpose, I swear on my soul. So that's digging down, knowing there's resources there, jumping in and gathering them. You know, and though this is inefficient and I got really lucky, you are welcome to do this. Go into a mine and just dig down if you like, I don't care. I do recommend though that you do try the other methods that I have here because they aren't a waste of time. Um, the second method of mining, if we go out here, is spelunking. So if we were to go down here at the start of our Minecraft careers, oh look at that lava, it's just chilling there, and we were to dig up all the coal and the copper and the iron and whatnot, we would have the best possible turner. That's actually the most efficient way to mine. You don't get any cobblestone or dirt and you get all resources. It's very efficient. The problem is, <clears throat> however, uh, the lack of late game resources. There aren't any lapis down there, and there are, well there's rarely lapis, but there definitely aren't any not diamond. I've never personally hit diamond while in a mine shaft, so, or a shaft like this, so, you know, that's that's definitely the, the, the backdrop to that. Um, and with the new block that just came out, Emerald, you know, you'd be, you <laughs> You'd be hard pressed to ever find that, let alone find it in there. So, um, you know, finally and probably most pleasingly to me is the actual mining of a game. So, mining it as I would describe it is digging a shaft leading to a central hub where you will mine out, and then digging sub tunnels off of it. Okay, so if we just dig a sub tunnel here, this is what I would consider mining. Okay. But you know, like, if we choose the size on the site, we can for sure make our mining experience far more efficient. But what you're probably wondering is how do we make the mining efficient in the first place? And you can see here I've dug one shaft here, okay, and I've also dug a shaft right beside it. And that's not efficient at all. And I'll explain that right now. So, you know, if we dig a block, so I'll dig a block over here. We know that behind it, after we've gathered that block, is a new block we haven't seen before. And knowing that this is a new block and we always want to find new blocks, we know where we don't want to dig. So if I were to dig here, okay, and I were to dig there, I wouldn't have discovered this block again. I would discover that block, and that block, and that block, and that block, but not this block. So that's partially inefficient. So that's one out of five possible blocks that we could have discovered. Now if I take this block and know that these two are here, and I don't mine here, I go back one, okay, I go one away, all of a sudden I've got two fresh new blocks that I've discovered. Okay, and that's how you make your mining efficient. You go where the blocks are brand new, always. So I can dig back here now and always consistently find all new blocks around here. You know, whether it's one, whether it's 20, you're always gonna find new blocks. Um, another thing I wanna kind of get into, oh my god, diamonds, level 10, um, is when you place torches, when you're mining, I notice a lot of newer players do this, 
You can see that you kind of have torches everywhere in this in this place. But really what you should do is have some sort of system to guide your way out of places. So if you're going to mine, at the entrance to your mine, place a torch on the ground. So that's kind of your guideline from home. And as you dig, every seven or so blocks from that, place a block, a torch on the right. Okay? So I'll keep going a little bit here. Okay? If I were to get lost, I would be able to turn around and see that this torch is on the left. And I would walk a little bit more, another torch is on the left. And if I walked a little bit more, another torch would be on the left. There wouldn't be a torch on the left and the right, and the left and the right, and we'd get all kind of lost. We'd be spun around and, oh my goodness, where's the exit? They're always on the left, so we know that they're always on the left, we can get out. And that's the safest way to do it. Okay. Now, knowing where diamond spawns, and I'll show you that upstairs when it gets to be bright out, um, diamond spawns at around from level 8 to level 12, and on average it spawns most likely at level 10. So if I dig up this place right here, you can see the, the approximate averages of where diamond will spawn. So if this is 10, that's 9, that's 8, okay, and that's 11, 12, and 13. Now 13 is the rarest, and so is, I believe that's 8, so we want to try and avoid those. According to the Minecraft wiki, okay, so this is a lot of diamonds. These were, I put these here. These aren't from the world. The mine, the diamonds in the world only spawn around 0.1% of all blocks in a chunk. So we put that kind of simply 66,000 times 0.1. That's about three or four diamonds, I think. I don't, I didn't do the math, you know, but that's what the wiki says. So, you know. If we're going to actually make a mine, we might as well figure out how high to dig, right? I mean, if this is the most likely area for a diamond to spawn, we don't want to dig down or up too high. So if we actually take our mine, okay, and we dig, say on average, four up. You notice what I did over here, so we've got, say, this is level 10, we've got 9, 8, 11, 12, and 13, right and all in view. So that's all the area that diamond can spawn in, so by mining four in height, at level 10 with your eyes, which is 10 blocks above obsidian by the, or above bedrock, you will always find the diamond. You'll, you'll never miss one piece, you'll never miss a chunk of it, you'll always find it. Now, aside from just mining randomly in any shape, and it, you know, in any shape, we've seen that we can do two across from each other, there are ways to make your actual mining more efficient. But before we get into that, like the mining layout, sorry, but before we get into that, I'm going to make a daytime, so I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to walk over here. You can see I've done a little bit of remodeling. I built that bridge I hinted at. And I've also finished the house, and we're going to maybe take a tour, maybe in a later episode or something. But the house is completely done on the inside now. But we're going to take a walk over here. And you can see I've kind of built little buildings, and I've kind of laid out some stuff on the ground. So we're going to go up these stairs and act like we've come down them from our mine shaft, like over there. Okay, we come down the stairs and we've hit our mine base. So here's the central base. Okay, these four are our mine base. You can see I've got tunnels leading off in any all the directions, but you can also see that in each direction they go off in another separate direction. So these ones go off that way, you know, and and likewise these ones go this way, and these ones go this way. And if you want to copy it, you know. I'll go up here, pause the episode here, and just copy it, draw it on paper, do whatever. You know, it's not that hard. This is a simple design, and this is very efficient. You're never going to hit a second block anywhere. You're never going to see the same block twice, okay? This is one design. So let's go on over to that far area over there. Just over here. And we'll check out the second design. This is the one I use in all of my series, and you'll notice that soon. Okay, we've got a layout where there's tons of rooms. Okay, lots of space, lots of extra space here, space, space, kind of thing. This is the second design. Now, I can't exactly show you this, I don't think. Although, if you want to, you can pause here as well. And take this as the um, design, I guess, of your of your mind. These are two of, only two, there's plenty of them out there. Go on Google, go on the wiki, do whatever. Um, and just type in Minecraft Mind Designs. 
or layouts or whatever you want to do and that'll that'll help you kind of get started on efficient mining you don't want to just dig a tunnel literally all the way to the end of the world it'd take you forever and you're missing out on a lot of the blocks this right here covers almost every block in a chunk so this is very efficient I, I recommend this almost more than I recommend that one but uh, I'm just akin to that one I would also like to say here the idea for mining here spacing to and then mining here wasn't actually my original idea um, it was given to me by fr my friend Pokorochi so you can thank him for that awesome set of wisdom of Minecraft wisdom I guess alright so let's go take a look at inside these mines what do they look like like the path say yes or no I don't care let's go look inside these so we got inside the first one you can see all these kind of resources and this is what it looks like on the inside when you're mining it out so you got four and you get your resources whoa what was that anyway you got more resources to get your mine okay you notice we never get lost because our torches are on the left nice so we got our design always able to find our way out nice now let's go check out the other design see what the layout looks like every two blocks is another entrance every two blocks another entrance tons of sheep all the sheep okay so we're entering the next mine I like this mine because it gives a lot of room at the middle of it to kind of have storage and whatnot. So you can see we've got all kinds of pickaxes and whatnot. All right, it's pretty nice. I like this one because it reminds me of the uh, the mines of Moria when you walk when they walk into the Khazad-dum, and there's just those giant pillars, and they have one. I mean, they have one torch, but imagine how awesome it would be if they had a, a bunch of torches. We could see that whole place lit up like. Mm-hmm like a boss so you know we take the designs oh wow that's terrifying that is the ugliest sheep I've ever seen so if we take those designs okay and we apply the rules of mining you know two apart from each other placing torches on the right carrying buckets with you always having a sword uh, bringing food lots of torches um, we can make our mining experience ten times more efficient than we would if we were just digging straight down. And that's the, me the message I really wanted to get across to you guys today. Never just dig straight down and never just kind of dig wherever. I mean, this is efficient, but never just dig wherever, you know. Make it an efficient experience and, and enjoy it. Um, get everything you possibly can out of the 66,000, you know. Only 5% of that is ore, so don't waste your time digging up all the stone. There's no point. Um, 5% of 66,000 isn't a lot, so, you know, go out, discover, um, I do recommend that. Um, mining is half the game, mining and crafting, okay? This is the bigger portion, and it's really hard to kind of delve into in one video. But what I do recommend is you go check out my other series, because I'm going to show that design in it. Okay, I'm not going to use this one, this is very awkward to set up and start up. Um, and, you know... Thanks for watching, I guess. Um, congratulations, you've officially made it through episode 4. Stay tuned. Next episode, we're del going to delve into the more advanced craftable items of the game, and just more items in the game. You know, We haven't done that yet, and I figure you guys deserve it. So, Enjoy, guys.